Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Josh and Jason Monday Christian and Conspiracy Podcast Show. I'm your host, Josh Monday. If you don't know me, I'm a Christian rapper, devoted husband, father, and army veteran. I like to introduce to my co-host. He's a Christian, devoted husband, father, and football coach. What's up, Jason? How's it going? Good, man. How you doing? How's everybody? How's everything going with you guys? Good. I was trying to hurry up to get here because we were. Uh, I was gone today, so I was just like, man, this took me a little bit, and just had to rush everything, and boom, made it happen. So. Yeah. Thank God. Thank God I'm here on time. So, all right, guys. So today we have a very uh, special guest for you. He's a returning guest from last week. Um, I, uh, he was kind enough to come back on this week because uh, I didn't have anybody this week. So um, all right, it's going to be Pastor Jim Brulette. And uh, his book is Angels or Aliens. And he's also working on another book. Check out his uh, YouTube page. Um, if you could shout that out, Pastor Jim, your YouTube page and any other book you're working on, please. Yeah, our, our YouTube page is uh, ChristChurchOfTheHolyWord.com. Uh, well, that's our website. I'm sorry. And and our uh, uh, YouTube page is uh, CCHW uh, Real News. Yep, perfect. Perfect. And, okay, guys. Um, perfect. Yeah, and then, uh, okay, so guys, today... Uh, and then, oh, do you have another book you're going to be working on or you just kind of, you don't want to release that yet? You're probably just kicking that around. Well, yeah, yeah, I, I am. And, uh, uh, the one, uh, what I'm in the middle of right now is, um, a book on the four hidden dynasties of the Bible, Okay. which, um, which comes straight out of, uh, the new and old Testament. And it, it's, um, it's the four major power structures within the world that uh, Satan is going to take control of. They're running things right now, pretty much, if you look around and yeah. take a look at, at what's going on. And when Satan shows up uh, in the final days, he's going to they're going to turn all that power over to him. Yeah, uh, that's what Revelation says. And yeah. uh, and we also go into their two major uh, the, the hidden dynasties, um, uh, I call one, uh, their enforcer, which, which basically is the scientific community out there. And the other one is their press agent, which is the world media. And, and all, all of them are all in step right now, united, just, uh, selling the same story, pushing like the same. A one world uh, government people, is a, so. yeah, a one world government, a that's new world order, want. however you want to put it. Yeah. It's, it's, that's exactly what they want. Well, you're definitely aligned with all the guests that we've had on the show, you know, the same kind of uh, awesome books that they've been coming out with. And, and that's great that you're coming I, out with all that. I saw that. Uh, I saw the Instagram post. You, you, you had Josh of uh, the red heifers. That was pretty cool. I don't know if you know that, that, uh, what that, what that is, what that actually instills, but that's a pretty cool. Uh, it's a pretty cool little thing too. Like this, the, the last, the, the ashes of the red heifer mm -hmm. that they, they're, 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 they're you showed that me to that. You, you're the one who had it. And I think it was on your, it yeah. was on your, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Somebody sent it to me immediately when they said that. I saw it. that, that one where they're, they're getting ready to have the te their temple. That's pretty cool. That's, that's pretty crazy too. This is all. It is it's all biblical. And they said that their Messiah is coming. So, you know, that they're, they're the antichrist is, I mean, we know who, the, who the, their Messiah is, you know, no offense to anybody that's Jewish. I apologize, but we're about to go over who the, the real Messiah is today on this show. What, and that's that's good to bring that up, Jason, because we're going to be going over uh, Jesus in the Old Testament, and we're also going to be going over the angel of the Lord, not an angel of the Lord, but the angel of the Lord. Who was it? And also, we're going to do a little bit about uh, Melchizedek as well. Uh, I think that's going to be, you know, just some interesting stuff that we're going to get into. These are my favorite. These are these are these are two of uh, some of my favorite subjects to actually talk about. Dude. This is pretty cool. Yeah, I was like, trying to bring them up when we're on shows, and some people don't like to dive into them. But I, I like I I'll, I'll talk about it all day long. This is this is this is yes. a cool subject, dude. So first off, I, what I like to get into uh, whenever I'm going to do anything that has to do with you know Jesus or the Trinity is is I I like to go over from the beginning you pray about it bro first yeah yeah first we'll, we'll pray about it let's, let's pray yeah, you about should it. pray about diving in that word right this, all right this, this, we're gonna yeah, dive bro. into the word so uh this is gonna be uh christian based and uh you could even call these you know you can call the angel of the lord uh almost not a conspiracy but 
you know, some, some, some stuff that's real touchy for some people to talk about. It's going to be, it's going to be awesome. What we're going to talk about. So let's go ahead and uh, pray the or something like that. Yeah. It's a different um, type of theology. Yes. Father God, in the name of Jesus, uh, please, if we're, we're going over your son, your only begotten son, we're going to be going over some stuff that's probably touchy for some people, you know, some Unitarians, maybe some oneness Pentecostals might not like what we're speaking about. We're going to try to speak the truth. Make sure that whatever we go over today is the truth. We're going to try to go over your word. We're going to do our best to dive in. And, uh, you know, I did some deep research. Uh, Pastor Jim did some research, Jason as well. So we're going to try to do our best, Lord. So if you could just let us uh, speak the truth and, uh, you know, and, and help us uh, to, to help our audience to understand what we are trying to teach here. And uh, if anybody gets offended by it, Lord, if you could just put your uh, healing hand on them, you know, and, uh, you know, we're just going to do our best here, Lord, and please help us all along the way. Thank you, Father God. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Amen. So what I like to get into first is, you know, if we're going to talk about Jesus in the Old Testament, let's talk about like Genesis, you know, some of the stuff in Genesis. Even in the very beginning, in the beginning, Elohim created the heaven and the earth. Now, Elohim is plural, okay? Uh, even if you go into Genesis 126, this is what it says. And Elohim said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Okay, guys? So think about that. Elohim is plural, okay? So that if that's not Jesus... And, and the Holy Spirit that God is talking to, plural means that's like saying gods, okay? Even the Jewish people back in the day had a little bit of issues with this, like plural, why would it be plural? So, you know, so uh, let's get into, you know, that's the first. We have Genesis 3.22 as well. It says, and, and the Lord God said, behold, the man is become one of us to know good and evil now. Uh, let's he put forth his hand and take also the tree of life and eat and live forever. So uh, it says that man has become one of us. Who's the us that he's talking to right there? Think about that, guys. All right. And, uh, and there's also another one, Genesis 11, 6, 7. And the Lord said, behold, the people is one and they have one language. And this is they begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them, which they uh, imagine to go. Let us go down. This is God talking, and they can found their and can found their language and make them understand uh, one another's speech. So that's just the beginning in Genesis. So you guys have to understand that's 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 stuff that Trinitarians use uh, to show you that there's plurality in the beginning. When, you know, sometimes they do use El, which is just God, but Elohim is plural. So I just think that gets interesting. Um, so far, we went over a few. Do you guys have anything to say about those verses that I went over so far, Pastor Jim or Jason? No, go ahead, Jim. I'm, 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 I'm listening. I'm, I'm going. What do you think about well, that, Pastor? Well, you know, I, I, I totally agree with you. The one, the one uh, caveat that I would throw in there, I think, is with, uh, uh, with the Elohim, um, the. Uh, uh, if if you take if you take that word and you you look at it, it, it actually I think um, one of the best translations that you get is God and His host, which a lot of people <clears throat> look at as um, those um, those his, the host of His spiritual beings that are in heaven. Um, the other ones, the other ones, though, I think are just absolutely uh, proof of the Trinity. Yes, I agree with that. Um, let's go to. It's not trying to prove the Trinity right now. It's just it's more along the lines of where I like to when I went through look through you you see that it's a it appears a lot in the Bible where there's an angel of the Lord or the angel of the Lord and. Some of them are named, some of them are not. Gabriel's obviously named. Lucifer is another angel that was that's named. Michael is another name that's named. That's named. But when the angel, like Gabriel, comes with a message, mostly of the Messiah. When he's always coming around to talk, he's always talking about the Messiah. So that's he's he, he's 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 dedicated for one one way. 
Michael is always dedicated. He's he's the leader of the armies. He's the leader of the of the military, uh, the host of the military. And then, uh, but you have the the angel of the Lord that comes out, like when uh, Joshua comes out and steps on holy, and 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 the, and the voice comes in and says, "Hey, take your shoes off. You're on holy ground." So who said? Who, who did? Who did he say? How do you know well, Joshua okay. knew what, what he said? Get, you're, you're trying to go with uh, you're going, you're going, trying to go with the angel of the Lord now. We're, we're, you can what? you can get into that if you want. I was I was getting. Is that what you're talking about? The angel of the Lord. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, no, yeah. That's what that's what I thought. That's what I thought you were talking about. The angel of the Lord. There's, no, we're gonna we're gonna get into that. Um, I, yeah, I just we're, we're, yeah, but we're, I'm just saying like there's you gotta understand there's different terms of them and like when you have you know the the, the Elohim part that's plurality yes, but there's also when they talk about the angel of the Lord, they also go plural with that as well. So there's plurality in that. There's there's a couple of times in the Bible that's plural uh, with that as well. So it's pretty cool to 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 do that because with John three sixteen it says the word was with when in the beginning the the word was with God and 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 he's he's the voice of the burning bush. I feel like he's the voice. I feel like Jesus Christ. Is all over the Old Testament, and we're diving into the Old Testament. This is my favorite place to go, Josh. So this is, this is this is my utmost love to, to go digging through the Old Testament. So yeah, go. I, I don't know what you're what you're trying to make your point was, but oh. I don't know what you want to dive into first. But I was just going off to say there's different terms about the angels. It's not just. I'm trying you know. to find that uh the, that verse that you sent me, Pastor Jim. Was it First Corinthians? Okay, here we go. All right, guys, here's what I want to go over real quick, okay? So I kind of went over gen uh, Genesis real quick about the plurality and everything. Uh, listen to what Paul says real fast. It says, um, he's speaking to Jesus here, okay? 1 Corinthians 15 verses, uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 15 uh, through 20. It says, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature, for by him were all things created, that are in heaven, that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones, dominions, or principalities, or powers, all things are created by him and for him, and he is before all things, uh, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body of the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the premise uh, for, it, for it please the Father, in him should all fullness dwell and having made peace through the blood of his cross by him, reconcile all things unto himself by him. I say, whether uh, they be things in earth or things in heaven. So when it's talking about in the beginning, Elohim created the heaven and the earth, Jason just brought up uh, first John where it talks about the word was with God. The word, the word was God, right? That's, we should probably go over that verse. So we got to understand. So Jesus was with God in the beginning. That's why it's plural. That's what I believe. Okay. So when he yeah, says, totally. so Jesus is the word, right? So um, that's, that's, so it's talking about in first Corinthians 15, you could understand that verse. It says, who is the image of the invisible God? Now it says that man is made in his image, right? In our image. So Jesus is the image of the invisible God. Okay. That's, that's, that's what gets interesting. So when he talks about, let us make man in our image, and then 1 Corinthians 15 says, who is the image of the invisible God? The firstborn of every creature. He's talking about Jesus, right? So Jesus is there when God created the heavens and the earth. You know, that's that's pretty much is what that's saying there. And um, let's go over uh, the verse that you talked about so we don't just uh, paraphrase. Uh, you're talking about. Um, so this is what 1 John says that Jason was talking about and Pastor Jim is it's also kind, it's talking kind of about. just like John 1 coincides with, with Genesis 1. The beginning is kind of like count signs kind of the same, you know, in the beginning. Yes. In the beginning, and, and, and it's it's pretty cool that way. And 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 John is trying to hammer down the fact that this is just just this it kind of it, it kind of just it, it's like a parallel with it. It's like you're trying to hammer that away. You got to listen to that. Like, yeah. So it says just, just throw the word throw Jesus in there instead, you know, like Jesus was with God, and and you know what I'm saying that that's yeah. That's exactly they, what they want to do. So they're trying to say that he was a voice of the burning bush. That's the type of stuff they're trying to get in. The word. Yeah. yeah. So word, and, voice and yeah. Of God, basically the word of God. So I'm going to get right into the, the angel of the Lord. As soon as I get finished with this right here. So How many coffees have you had, Josh, man? You're like on a, I, I, I got you right now. You're like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not, I haven't had any coffee yet, bro. I just got off. You haven't of, had no bangs, no coffees. No, no I took a sip, but I'm good. Hey, you're starting so, to 
first <laughs> John one, it says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made in him was life and life was, was the light of men and the light shineth darkness and comprehended not. So you guys got to understand that. So in the beginning was the word and the word was with God. So in the beginning, this is the way Trinitarians take this. And this is the way I take it. In the beginning was the word. So Jesus and Jesus was with God and Jesus was God. So think about that. Right. And I think, I think Josh, if what really cements it in, if you go down to the 14th verse in that same chapter, mm -hmm. that that's the, mm -hmm. I mean, that just shows it up because uh, that verse says, and the word, which it was talking about up in that first verse, uh, you know, in the beginning was the word in verse 14, it says the word was made flesh. In other words, Jesus came into this world in flesh form and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory and the glory as the only begotten of the father full of grace and uh, truth. So, I mean, that pretty much sews it up. Uh, there should be no mistake about who the word was and that Jesus had been there since the very beginning. Exactly. So that's, that's perfect. So, uh, that's, that's exactly how it was. That's perfect. Uh, uh, to, that's verse. telling you that that is, yeah, that is Jesus. Yeah, I read that one home right there. Okay. So let's go. Um, all right, let's go back up to the notes. So we got, so we went over Genesis. Um, there's also some stuff that, that Jesus is saying about him being mentioned in the old Testament, that everything was, uh, was about him um so we have dude he, he he appears he starts appearing in genesis yeah he appears, yeah. Abraham, he appears to hagar he appears to gideon he appears that's to the lord that's the angel of the lord that's a different one do you want you, you want to get into that we can get it no that, that that's the, what do you mean that's that's a different one. that's the same that's all the appearance of jesus christ in, in, in the old testament and so i feel that that's 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 how it is yeah, that, that's I, I, I agree with you. I, I agree with you, Jason. I believe they may they may use different terminologies, but if there's a if there's a physical form that whether it's Melchizedek or whether it's a, the angel of the Lord, whatever, if they're appearing to people, I, I believe it's Jesus. Yeah, so you know? I can um, so there's a there's a few verses that, that Jesus actually talks about where it's say, where it's talking about um where he's saying like this is like John uh, five verses forty one through forty seven, where where this is what I think kind of proves the angel of the Lord thing a little bit. That's going to help us push into the angel of the Lord. So Jesus is talking. He says, "I do not receive honor from men, but I but I know you that you do not have the love of." This is uh sorry John five verses forty one through forty seven, and um he says, "I do not receive honor from men, but I know you that you do not have the love of God in you." I have come. In my father's name, and you do not receive me. If another comes in his own name, him will receive. How can you believe who who receive honor from one another and do not seek the honor that comes from the only God? Do you think that I shall accuse you to the father? Uh, there is one who accuses you, Moses, in whom you trust. For if you believed Moses, you would believe me, for he wrote about me. But if you do not believe his writings, how will you believe my words? So he's talking about Moses writing about him, okay? So not only the prophecies right. is fulfilling, but also what we're about to get into right now. Now that we're going to get into the angel of the Lord part, but what I want to say is this, the question we're going to address is who was the angel of the Lord. Okay. Uh, we're not, okay. We're not saying 100% that, that, that we know for a fact that Jesus is the angel of the Lord, but we're going to, we're going to go over some verses that kind of show you that you got to question this and find out hey, who is this? What you guys need to understand, though, is we're not saying that Jesus is an angelic being, okay? We're saying that he is the messenger of God because angel means messenger, okay? So uh, it's we're not saying that Jesus is an angel, okay? We're saying that Jesus is the messenger of God here or, or messenger of the Lord, okay, guys? So you guys got to understand that because some people might get it twisted and think we're trying to be like Jehovah's Witness and say that Jesus is an angel. It's not the angelic being an angel. It is the messenger, okay? That's what we're trying to say. So that's what it means in Hebrew. And Josh, I think it's important so people understand that that's exactly 
exactly what the word angel means. Messenger. messenger. So yeah. when, yeah, exactly. So when it, when it says the angel of the Lord, actually what it's saying is the messenger of God. Yep. But also and what's weird to me is that the angel of the Lord, he, he accepts worship. He does. And we're going to go over. So uh, there, that, that's that right there should show you right there without a doubt who that really is. You know what I mean? Like it's it, other angels are allowed to accept worship. Lucifer is not Lucifer. Wasn't allowed to accept worship. He commanded, he, he, he was, uh, he was ordained to worship. But he, he wanted to worship to come through him. Not he, he went through him. He, he wanted to come to him after that. But there's there's an angel, the 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 angel of the Lord that that is allowed to be worshipped. That kind of throws a little thing in there, like okay, well then now you know who this is. Yeah, like, let's God. Let's go over some verses that this is like. I'm gonna kind of go over some verses that show this is from when he, when the angel of the Lord first showed up, uh, Genesis 16, verses seven through twelve, which Jason kind of brought up the Hagar thing. So it says, now the angel of the Lord found her by a spring of water in the wilderness by the spring on the way to Shur. And he said, Hagar, Sarah's maid, where have you come from? And where are you going? She said, I am fleeing from the presence of my mistress, Sarai, which is Sarah guys, which is Abraham's wife. Okay. The angel of the Lord said to her, return to your mistress and submit yourself under your hand. Then the angel of the Lord said to her, I will multiply your descendants exceedingly so that you shall not be counted for the multi for multitude and the angel There's lord the said promises her, of that were given to abraham as well so they listen are her, 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 those now, well that part right there is interesting because he's not saying god will multiply 12, your descendants 12 tribes in their thing he's this is not saying god's going to multiply it says i will multiply your descendants exceedingly so that you shall not be counted for multitude this is the angel of the lord speaking and the angel of the lord said to her behold you are with the with the child and you shall bear a son you shall call his name Ishmael, because the Lord has heard your affliction. He shall be a wild man. His hand shall be against every man and every man's hand against him. And he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. So first of all, he already knows her name. He already knows that she's pregnant, right? Which is interesting. He's also saying that he will multiply her descendants. So he's speaking like he's the authority of God, right? And he's speaking like, He's going to multiply the descendants. So I think that's an interesting part. Um, you guys have anything? I think that's such an, uh, I think it's so important, Josh, because I, I, I think that if you go through and, and that verse in Genesis is a perfect example, it shows the power of God, mm -hmm. you know, whereas in other places where it talks about an angel, of, there isn't that same power described, but, but right there, I mean, that who else could that be if they have that power, you know, other than other than God? Yes. And um, so here's another and we're going to go uh, we're going to go a little further to uh, Genesis 16, 13, which is continuing on. It says, and she called the name of the Lord that spoke unto her. Thou God seest me. And she said, also, I have heard uh, I, I have also I hear looked after him that seeth me. So. She said, and she calleth the name of the Lord that spoke unto her. So she's saying that God or the Lord spoke unto her. Adonai spoke unto her. So she's saying, she's not saying that God's angel spoke unto her. She said that the name of the Lord spoke unto her. Now, what happens is some people uh, like that are like Jewish scholars and stuff would say that she's just blown away that that this angel of the lord knows all this stuff and that she's she's making a mistake there but um you guys got to understand that the the author of genesis is not moses at this point the, the author of genesis is god because god is because moses wasn't alive during this time so god is explaining to him everything that's happening right here so when jesus is writing genesis i mean i'm sorry when when moses is writing genesis god is the author at this point so you guys got to understand God's not going to make a mistake there. God is saying everything, I think, to Moses while he's writing it down, right? Verbatim. So, verbatim. Yeah, just say, hey, dude, you have to explain this right so people get it and understand it. And the people that do understand it, 
they'll be blessed. They're going to get blessed. People that don't understand it, sorry, you're not going to, you're not, you're, it's going to, if you don't get it by now, you're never going to get it. I'm sorry. You got hammer. You, this, this stuff is blatantly in your face. This is, this is stuff that that's, that's written all through there. People think, is there secret codes written in the Bible? Yeah, there are. And you need to find them and you need to look through them. God leaves through. you breath, breadcrumbs. Yeah. And, 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 and it's, it's for Kings to search out, man. You know what I'm saying? It's for, it, it, this is what, this is what you're supposed to be doing. The Berean challenge. Read, read these things and find out if they're true. Acts 17, 11, get your butt in there and really understand it. And that's why when some people that like, when some people like when that, we had a guy, I guess last, last time he was talking about how like God showed him, God talked to him. And so this is, this, this is what he showed me. And I'm like, Hey man, you're listening to something that, that's not telling you about the, you know, like, you know, the gospel that's not preaching to you, right, bro? And that's not something that you should be listening to. Yeah, I, I, not I, if, if, an, if, a, if an angelic being comes down to you and he's not preaching the gospel. Yeah, no, Paul says right not that. Paul says, yeah, you know, know, and, you, and you don't know how to discern it. You don't know how to discern it. You know, what I mean, you could get tricked up into some serious stuff. Yeah, you get who who knows what. This is why you got to learn the Bible. Hey, man, that doesn't sound right. That doesn't sound right. That and this angel of the Lord, he he. he He's unnamed. Why is he unnamed? God, he's, he names Gabriel, he names Michael. He throws those names out there. He throws Lucifer's name out there. Why is he naming this? Why is this one named? Yeah. Because he doesn't have to be named. You already know who he is. All right, so we got another one. Genesis 21, verses 17 through 19. And God heard the voice of the lad. Then the angel of God, what's the angel of God and the angel of the Lord is, 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 this, is to me the same, okay? Then the angel of God called to Hagar out of heaven and said to her, what alias you, Hagar? Fear not, for God has heard the voice of the lad where he is. Arise, lift up the lad and hold him with your hand, for I will make him a great nation. Then God appeared, opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water, and she went and filled the skin and water and gave a lad a drink. Okay, so we have that. And also, uh, this is very interesting right here, because this, to have the angel of the Lord here in this situation for some reason, back in the day when I read this, these verses right here, guys, I did not realize that the angel of the Lord was, was the one here when Abraham was going to sacrifice Isaac. And this is very important mm -hmm. because this is the same thing that – go ahead, Jason, or, or, or Pastor but, but look, but, but look what he says. God will provide himself a lamb. And who shows up? Yeah, the lamb. The sacrificial lamb. Yeah. <laughs> the angel of the Lord shows Jesus, up. Yeah. Yes, you know, Jesus, and, guys. And you, you start to like – this stuff is, 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 is very, not very difficult to get, but it's hard to like, you got to piece it together. You got to go through the old Testament and be like, okay, well, this is where it's, you go through it. Then you get the new Testament. You're like, oh, wow, this it, it's confirming everything from, from here. This has got to be holy. This has got to be divinely influenced, man. There's no way that man wrote this, wrote this by himself. Like, Hey, I was going to diddle this out as a Shakespearean yeah. play. And then see what happens and see what happens to people's minds. Yeah, so, so let's, <laughs> you're, if, if this is wrong, you're dirty tricks, man. This is not funny. It's not a fun <laughs> joke. It's All right. So joke. let's go. Genesis uh, 22 verses 11 through 19. This is Abraham sacrifice or not sacrificing Isaac, but putting Isaac up as a sacrifice. It says, uh, but the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. So he said, here I am. And he said, do not lay your hand on your lad or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God since you have not withheld your son, your only son from me. Then Abraham lifted his eyes and looked and behind him was a ram caught with a thicket of his horn. So Abraham went, took the ram and offering for a burnt offering instead of his son. And Abraham called the Lord to his call, called the name of the place the Lord will provide. You see how he calls out to Abraham though? Yeah. Same way yeah. he calls out to Adam. Here I am. Right? Here I yeah. am. Yeah. What have you been doing, here dude? You know, here I am. Like, here am I. You know, you know, this is it's, it's it, you start to see the 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 way the Holy Spirit's like, hey, look, it's right here, man. I'm letting you know, like th this is I'm giving you the playbook, dude. This is you start to piece this stuff together. You can okay. Here, here's the part that I wanted to go over. So this is the angel of the Lord speaking again, okay. By myself, I have sworn, says the Lord, 
because you have done this thing and have not withheld your son, your only son, uh, blessing. I will bless you and multiplying. I will multiply your descendants as the stars of heaven. This is the angel of the Lord telling him, I will multiply your descendants. The same way that he said that to Hagar. He's saying that to Abraham. This is not God saying this. This, this is the angel of the Lord. So it is God saying it. It is God saying, saying it. I know, I know. But I'm just saying, who, like, who for else somebody has that, that power except God? Who, and Michael you, doesn't do that stuff. Gabriel doesn't walk up to the scene saying stuff like that to anybody. No. Starts, you know, nope. They're, they're always trying to push glory on God, like all glory to God, all glory to God. They're not trying to say, I will do this. That's what something Satan would do, right? He's prideful. He would say, I, 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 I. But no, like, this is God talking. This is why it gets so interesting, but I just want to show that, that that was the big point of that one. I was wondering, I was like, where's it at? Boom. Then I saw it right there. So good. All right. So uh, here's another interesting one in Genesis 31, 11 through 13. This is another one that, that this is like, this is like him saying, I am God. It says, then the angel of the Lord spoke to me in a dream saying, Jacob. And I said, here I am. Same thing. And he said, lift your eyes now and see all the rams which leap on the flocks are streaked, speckled, and gray spotted. For I have seen that the Laban is doing to you. I am the God of Bethel, where you are anointed the pillar where you made me vow to me. Now arise, uh, get out of this land and return to the land of your family. He's saying, I am the God of Bethel. This is the angel of the Lord speaking to Jacob. I am the God of Bethel. Uh, wouldn't it say like... Something different right there. If that's not God talking, I mean, that's interesting. Uh, what, do you guys have anything about on that? Yeah. What do you think? Well, it's like you said. There's, there's, uh, there's no way that any messenger of God would would say that unless he had the power and the authority of God. And um, it's blasphemy <laughs> if you do that. Right? Yeah, it would be blasphemy. Exactly. <laughs> right? Exactly. And God, yeah. at this point, God is the author to Moses. So he, this is the way he wanted it to be spoke. And you know what? This is the way I'm going to speak it and let everybody else uh, argue about all this. This is the way that, that Moses is writing it. So it gets interesting. So another uh, interesting thing, which I skipped over and didn't even know until I do these deep studies, is in Exodus 3, verses 2 through 6. The angel of the Lord appeared to him, talking about Moses, the angel of the Lord appeared to him, a blazing fire from the midst of a bush. And he looked and behold, the bush was burning with fire, yet the bu bush was not consumed. So Moses said, I must turn aside now and see the marvelous sight why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he turned aside to look, God called to him from the midst of the bushes and said, Moses, Moses, and he, excuse me. And he said, here I am, right? Like, here I am, the same type of, uh, of style. So it, it's probably Jesus and, and God the Father in the burning bush. Well, you understand, if God appeared to you, you'd probably just evaporate. You know what I'm saying? You're, you're, you'd never be able to stand in his, in his, in his, his, his... Well, it says if you see God, you would die. I know, he but said, it's, yeah. it's, like I said, the Shekinah glory, the, the full glory of God would probably... Just, just decimates you. That's why the angel of the Lord comes because he is, you know, he's the word. He's the voice of God. That's why the voice. Sure. That's why I'm the alpha and the mega. I'm the, I'm the, I'm the man, bro. So you, you there ain't nobody going through him, to him, but through me. So get that right, right now. Understand that this is what, this is what they're trying to show you. You don't, you don't talk to God unless you're, you're going to go through the sun. He doesn't come to you. There you go. Full That's glory. Exactly You've got to go to him through him. So if the angel of the Lord is coming through you and talking to you, it's pretty, it's pretty effing important. Yeah. You better open your ears and be like, okay, well, all ears. That's why, like, uh, like I know I know I might be skipping ahead when he goes when the angel of the Lord visits Samson's parents. They straight up said after that, hey, we're gonna die. We just saw God. We just saw yeah. God, and he didn't deny it. It doesn't say after that, no, don't say that. Don't call, don't, you know, don't worship me. Don't, don't refer to me as that, dude. That's not right. No, nothing's written about that. It's straight up confirming that. It's more the affirming angel, it. 
The angel it, in Revelation, uh, when John bowed down to him, he said, "Get up, don't worship me, worship God." Right away. Yes, yes. He yes. right away corrected him. Right. So yeah, yes. this is this exactly. is a pattern. Yeah, here and there's seeing. several, there's several instances that if it's just an angel, that's what they tell man. Hey, don't. I'm just like you. Yeah. But not the angel of the Lord. Well, man is going to judge angels, is what Paul said. That we're going to be on the level we're judging angels. So you got to understand that. Like in the hierarchy right now, angels are obviously probably above us right now, but but at some point we're going to be pushed to that that level. So listen, we got Judges one or two verses one through four. Here's some more stuff about the angel of the Lord, and this is interesting. He says, "Now the angel of the Lord came up from Gilgal and Bochum. I probably butchered that, and he said, "I brought you up out of Egypt and led you into land which I have sworn to your fathers. And I said, I will never break up my covenant with you. And as for you," You shall make no covenant with the inhabitants of this land. You shall tear tear down their altars, but you have done, but you have not obeyed me. What what is this you have done? Therefore, I I also said I will not drive them out before, but they will become as thorns in your sides, and their gods will snare you. So it's like he's talking like he brought them out of Egypt, right? The angel of the Lord brought him out of Egypt. He said, I brought you out of Egypt and led you into the land, which I have sworn to your fathers. And I said, I will never break my covenant with you. As for you, you shall make no covenant with the inhabitants of this land. That's the angel of the Lord talking, bringing them out of Egypt. Spoken as God. Yeah. Spoken right. as God. Like Joshua too. They say, oh, who, 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 uh, who brought down the walls of Jericho there? Not Joshua. That was that was that was Jesus. That was God. That was Jesus. The angel of the Lord was there. He's commanding worship. He's, he's saying the same thing that God said to Moses. You move your feet, shoes. You're on holy ground. And Josh heard that. And when Joshua heard that, he's like, "Okay, this is this. He's he 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 is who he is." And it's like, man, you, you angel of the Lord in in uh in King, Second Kings slaughters hundred forty thousand Syrians in one Dude. one swoop. Look at that next verse I have. Second Kings, yeah. that's crazy. You're talking about a you're talking about a dude that okay. This is where you get Jesus as the servant, right? Jesus as a servant when he comes as, as a man. But this is portraying Jesus as straight up gangster, dude. Straight up, just like I, I, I'm a I am the warrior and I am the servant. I am both one. I am this is where I don't think the Jewish people got it when they when 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 Jesus came, you know, to them, to his own, he was not accepted. Right. Because they didn't, they didn't see that in the old Testament. They didn't really put that together yet. They had some they, issues. With they, they wanted their warrior. They wanted their King. They wanted this. Oh, come on. Let's go Israel. We're going to, we're going to, they, they wanted a king world. that was rich. Like Solomon he was already there. He showed <laughs> yeah. you, he beat, he battled and got you to where you were supposed to be. Now he's showing you the side of, Hey, even I washed, even I washed Judas's feet, bro. Even yeah. I did that. You need to learn how to do this now too, because it's not about the old Testament. People say a God might've changed his mind, but no, his road to redemption is, is even though it's long and far, it's, it's purposeful. You, you need to, you need to understand that it's it, you, your, your life from beginning to end is just one road to redemption, getting you to be, be redeemed, not to go party, not to go give off stuff to, and to worship other things in your life. Is to be redeemed, and if you don't see that now, you better see it sometime soon because you could be wiped out tomorrow. Yeah. So, uh, Jason was talking about Second Kings nineteen through thirty-five. It says, "Then it happened that night that the angel of the Lord went out and struck one hundred eighty-five thousand in the camp of the Assyrians. And when men rose early in the morning, behold, all of them were dead. Okay. They were. They were like, and what? Isaiah the that that's that confirmed. never never ever fought them again he never went he never went against israel after that never tried that that's nothing. that was confirming a verse in isaiah actually second king so in, in isaiah 37 uh verse 36 it says then the angel of the lord went out struck 185,000 in the camp of assyrians and men arose early in the morning so that's confirmed in I, isaiah and then second kings is confirming that Did you imagine so that you them. wake up you're waking up you're like you're gonna go to war the next day and you wake up and ha and all your buddies are dead and you're just like what the heck who 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 came into camp i didn't hear nothing no one screaming no one crying you just wake up and all half your half the your army is dead 
what are you going to do? You're going to crap your pants and you're going to leave. You're going to leave. You're like, dude, I'm not going to, I'm not going to take no part of this. I'm not going to fight this. This, this, this is, this guy's divinely, these guys are divinely backed up by something that's more powerful than us. Okay. So, uh, pastor Jim, uh, before I get into some more stuff, did, did you want to go over some of your notes? I know you, you sent this to me. Um, you have a second Samuel verses 24 and, uh, sorry, 24, 16. Do you want me to go to that? That's in your um, notes. Yeah, we could, but you know, uh, just to go along with the flow of, um, uh, what we're talking about here. Um, I think it's important, you know, uh, almost everybody, I think, um, that has a basic understanding of going to church and stuff, somewhere down the line has heard the thing that you can't, you, you, you can't see the face of the Lord and live. Yes. And I think that's one of the, one of the real misunderstood, um, concepts in Christianity, because I think, I think in those places where it states that it, it's talking about the fact in order to really know the Godhead, to, to know the Trinity, you've got to die. You, you can't be in, in this dimension. You can't be and, and see and really see God almighty. We can, he, he allowed us the angel of the Lord or, or Melchizedek, or they're all, in my opinion, Jesus, he allowed us that the ability to see that physical uh, representation of him. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, I, I just wanted to point that out. There's a lot of places. There's one, um, let's see, I think it's in Judges uh, uh, 13, chapter 13, where, uh, where he's talking to um, uh, Man Manano. I probably butchered yeah. that one, Josh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's but, so um, yeah, so I'm done. <laughs> but but he's actually concerned about the fact that he saw the angel of the Lord, and he says, "I saw the face of God." And um, what he misunderstood was that old uh, Judaism uh, <laughs> saying that you can't you can't live and see the the face of God, but. Yeah. He was seeing, he was seeing uh, Jesus Christ, I believe. Yeah, and that's that's interesting. So, ah, uh, so I think... correct him though. He doesn't come and say, "No, I'm not." He doesn't. Say, hey, I know. What you, he doesn't come in and go, "Hey, I know what you said to your wife last night about me about uh, me being God. I'm not God. I'm just an angel. Don't 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 call me God." He doesn't correct him. If he does correct it, no. the, like the other the other. The other divine. Oh, and if it was an angel, he would have. You can be sure. Yes, of that. yes, you would have corrected him rather than. It happens all. It happens several times in the Bible where. So where this people is, I like the part where I like the part where he visits where, where where this is what trips me out. Balaam, Balaam is a prophet in the Bible. Okay, and he's visited by the angel of the Lord. What 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 gets me about that is that is that some people would say that he's evil or whatever that, but he was so spiritual, he's he still listened, he 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 still had to abide by what he said because he knew he was real. He knew that 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 he knew that that our God, our living God, that that one, there's, he was real, and he wasn't not to be messed with and not to be everything that. But he but he Balaam in the end did you know. He didn't, he didn't break his word. He just showed him how to, how, how to, how to, how to get, you know, the Israelites and, and, and God's people, how to, how to sin and really get away from him. But in the end, he, even, he recognized that, Hey, this is the man right here. I'm not, and this is, this is, this is a, this is, a, this is not, he was, a, he was, he sold his goods for money. He was a, he was not a, he, that's not a good thing to do, but he was also, a, he, he was very spiritual and saw that, he even recognized, okay, he's the man. I can't, I can't go against, I can't go against him. Sorry. He even tells, he even tells Balak, I'm sorry, bro. I can't go against him. It's he's the, he's the, he is the most high. Sorry, bro. Not yeah. doing that, but I will, I'll help you. So it, it, this goes along right. with uh, what pastor Jim was saying. This is uh, John 5 37. Okay. 
And this is Jesus speaking. He said, and the father who sent me, he has, he has testified of me. You have neither heard his voice at any time nor seen his form. And in the Greek, that means no man has ever seen God. Precise. The father. Okay. I'm not saying God in the, in the Godhead. No man has ever seen uh, or heard his voice at any time. You have neither heard his voice at any time nor seen his form. Now, that's interesting. So I want to read uh, John 8, 48. This is kind of long, but it's all good. I'm just going to read it because it goes along with what we're talking about. Okay. This is the <laughs> I am verse. Okay, guys. The I am verse, which is very interesting. I am the... Then the Jews answered it. This is uh, 48 to 59. Okay. It says, then the Jews answered and said to him, do we not say rightly that you are a Samaritan and you have a demon? Jesus answered, I do not have a demon, but I honor my father and you dishonor me. And I do not seek my own glory. There is one who seeks and judges. Most assuredly, I say to you, if anyone keeps my word, he shall never see death. Then the Jews said to him, now we, now we know that you have a demon. Abraham is dead and the prophets. And you say, if anyone keeps my word, he shall never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham who is dead and the prophets are, and, and the prophets are dead? Who do you make yourselves out to be? Jesus answered, if I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my father who honors me of whom you say that he is your God, yet you have not known him, but I, but I know him. And if I say, I do not know him, I shall be a liar like you, but I do not, but I do know him and keep his word. Your father, Abraham rejoiced to see my day. And he saw it and was glad. Then the Jews said to him, you are, you are yet 50 years old. Have you seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, most assuredly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. Then they took up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid himself and went to the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. So that's Jesus. So when, when Abraham saw him, he didn't try to kill him. When did Abraham see him? The angel of the Lord came to Abraham. Okay? Yeah. That's the part right there right. I wanted to talk about. And he said before Abraham, <laughs> I am. That's what God said in the burning bush. Who shall I say I am? Uh, or who should I say you are? That's what Moses is saying. Hey, the people are going to ask me. Say that I am who I am. So Jesus is saying that right there. Like, wow. Now, we have to dig deep into the word of God to understand some of these things. It's like unlocking a key. Once you see it, you can never unsee it. Okay. Yep, yep. It's, it's, it's like you have to. Now, people all day long will fight against all the stuff we're talking about, but all we're Trinitarians here. All three of us, I believe Jason is, 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 I, I believe Jason's a Trinitarian now. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, someone who can't, ex I look at it this way. It's so beyond because there's so many people that argue this. I mean, talking top scholars, top theologians, top pastors, top Christians. And it's, I look at it this way. I cannot I cannot say anything on it because I, 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 it's, we're all right. And we're all wrong. That's how I think we're all right about it. And we're all wrong about it. So I don't know if like have the world is flat, if the world is round, <laughs> I wasn't there when it was created. So like, he's so dope, I can't just gird up my loins and pull my balls up and say, this is what it is. So that's why I'm saying. I'm not trying to, I just know that God, the father, and the Holy spirit, and Jesus Christ, as we're trying to teach you, they're not only three, they are one. They do have their different personalities, but they are three different persons. One. Yeah. So they are one. Something I noticed, and Pastor Jim, you could correct me if I'm wrong. I noticed in the New Testament, there isn't an appearance of the angel of the Lord. There's a few appearances, though, of an angel of the Lord, which is a an angel of the Lord, but it's not the angel of the Lord. So during Jesus's ministry, I mean, where did the angel of the Lord go? If you, you see him all throughout the old Testament, and then when Jesus comes, you don't see him at all. Now you do see an angel of the Lord, which would be Gabriel, Gabriel, whose name means messenger. Okay. But the Holy spirit influenced the writings to be different. So that Okay, the Holy Spirit influenced the writings of the New Testament or God influenced the writings of the New Testament. So they would have put, if, if Gabriel is the angel of the Lord, 
the Holy Spirit would have put the angel of the Lord Gabriel came to Mary or came to um, uh, Mary's cousin. I can't remember her name. He's unnamed for a reason. Yeah. Elizabeth. Elizabeth. There you go. So it says that Gabriel. He came to Daniel. And Acts as well. I'm sorry. King of the Messiah. Always bringing the message of the Messiah. Never, ever bringing uh, anything else. So yes, but Josh, I think that's a I think that's a great observation. At the time when Jesus was here with us on earth, what? there's no scripture that talks about the angel of the God be, uh, of God but, because he was already here the with angel us. That's there what you about go. the angel that's standing over his tomb that's on the that's on the tomb when he when they when they roll up to the tomb and they're like, hey. Where's Jesus? And, and 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 the angel of the Lord, I think it is, it says he's not here. I don't gotta, think that one's not named either. I think, though, find out, though. Look it up while I'm, uh, while I'm, while I'm going through this. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know for sure on that one, Jason. No, nope, I don't think I'm, it's I'm, the I'm, angel of the Lord. If it was, bro, I think it's, I think it says, that. I think it, <laughs> no, but I think it says an angel of the Lord, but it's unnamed again. Okay, well, it, it probably I, I, says I, I, unnamed angel of the Gabriel. Lord. That's why, I'm, that's why I wanted to add, tell Pastor Jim, correct me if I'm wrong, because this is something I noticed. I'm not going to be a 100%. So, guys, look it up. Read it. Read it, it. If, I'm, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But I believe. Uh, uh, okay, here. I, I, I got something for you here, okay? Uh, let's do it. Um, Luke. Luke. Um, I'm just trying to throw it out there. One, chapter 1, verse 38. Okay. And Mary said, this is, this is when you're talking about uh, the women went to the tomb. And Mary said, behold, the handmaid of the Lord. Uh, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed uh, from her. So it's, it's not the angel. The it's Lord. not. Uh, it's, it's, it's behold the handmaid. Yeah. Of. And, and and if you hear, so it's a little different. you're going to hear an angel. It's like an angel of the Lord, like instead of the angel of the Lord, that's, that's what I, I, I got out of reading the, the new Testament. I never hear the angel of the Lord. So it gets very interesting. Um, they say it like an angel of the Lord. So it's like, it's like an angel, like an angelic being, not the messenger of the Lord. So I think it, it's, so if you don't see it anymore, where did the angel of the Lord go? Look how much important people that he, he was in. With you know, you look at it. He's with Hagar. He's with Abraham. He's with uh, you know, he's with uh, uh, Samson. He's with all these important people in the Old Testament, and he's in important spots. You know, the burning bush, uh, all these different spots. It's like, so where did he go? That's something you guys need to find out. Look into it. It's like, where did he go in the New Testament? It's like, wow. Well, he was Jesus. Is something we could. That's something you could interpret it as that he was Jesus because Jesus was, he with, was already with us. here exactly there we go so it gets so interesting um so you, you uh, know i don't know if you're uh if you're ready to do this but uh it's a perfect uh lead-in to melchizedek because who when when in that verse they're talking about abraham and uh he came and spoke to abraham and abraham saw him and abraham tithed yeah, Melchizedek, and, and Abraham wouldn't tithe to anybody but God. So uh, that's that's one of the the main pins where I hang my hat on the fact that Melchizedek was Jesus Christ. It was the word. You know, we didn't have the name Jesus Christ yet. What does Melchizedek but we had mean? The word. It means it means uh okay. So Malik means king, and Sedek means righteous. So king. Of the righteous, so righteous king. So he was a and, king and a priest, a high he priest. He was the king of Salem, which means the king of peace. Yeah. And Salem becomes Jerusalem. So basically, he's the king of Jerusalem. So Melchizedek, which is God's favorite place in the whole world. It, it so think about that. Bible. It gets so interesting. So we could go into Melchizedek now, guys. This is something maybe a lot of you haven't heard about because maybe you breeze through the sometimes like me. I'm, I'm guilty of this until you get it like pushed in your face and you're like, whoa, this is insane. Then you, sometimes you just breeze through 
and you don't connect all these different things, but there's so many awesome things out there in the Bible that you just will just blow your mind. Like, like the Bible is so amazing. You know, God is so great. So let's look at this. Genesis 14 is the first time you will hear of Melchizedek is Genesis 14 verses 18 through 24. It's exactly what pastor Jim was talking about. And this is a good time to get into this. Then Melchizedek King of Salem brought out bread and wine. Who does that remind you of? Uh, and he was the priest of God, the most high. And he blessed him and said, blessed be Abram. At the time, Abraham was not named Abraham yet. It's Abram of God, most high possessor of heaven and earth. And blessed be God, most high, who has delivered your enemies into your hand. And he gave him a tithe of all. Now, the king of Sodom said to Abram, give me the persons and take the goods of yourself. But Abram had said to the king of Sodom, I have raised my hand. And God, uh, most high, the possessor of heaven and earth, that I will take nothing from a thread to a sandal strap. So he didn't want to take anything from the king of Sodom or the king of uh, Gomorrah. Uh, this is a time that it was it was a crazy time. But just like um, you were talking about Melchizedek, this is the first time you hear about him. And it's kind of like a little small part. Now, there's no Aaron yet. So. Most of the uh, don't th doesn't the, like the priests have to come through Aaron or the or Levites, right? Doesn't that all the priests have to come through Levites? So there's no Levites yet, right? Because Abram hasn't had the or Jacob had, didn't have the 12 tribes yet. So think about this he is the priest of the Most High, Melchizedek, and he's also a king, he's a priest and king at the same time. Like, whoa, when does that happen, guys? And this guy also comes and he blesses him. he brings out the 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 bread and wine now jesus right if you break the bread and you drink the wine you know it's kind of like it, it's kind of like a uh, either either he is jesus or he is a um what an is idiom. it called christopher yeah. what's christopher an idiom, I can't remember what it's an idiom for jesus christ yeah 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 so let's let's look at another spot uh in the old testament that's that uh melchizedek is mentioned well, well, hold on, hold on. But, but you said tithing too. You said he tithed them, 10%, right? Ten percent. He tithed but to. That wasn't law yet. That wasn't Jewish law yet. So how did he know to tithe him ten percent? Yeah, you're right. You know what I'm saying they... that's that's how you. That's how like like okay, set, keep it the Sabbath day stuff like that. Did, were these things you know being practiced back then? But how did he know to tithe ten percent to his king as priest you know yeah terrible. to the high to one of the first only probably one of the only mentions of a uh, of other than jesus christ and us that are kings and high priests you're supposed to be that's 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 not mentioned anywhere they're, 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 like you said josh the levites weren't royalty they didn't go to war they didn't go do stuff like that they were the priests yeah so there was a difference between royalty and the priests. It's just somehow. Can, they... can, can I point out one thing real quick here For too that sure. goes right along with what you were saying, Josh? Is if uh, we talked a little bit about it last week, um, through the through the bloodline of Mary, it brings that that king line of Judah with the with the priest line of of uh, Levi together in Jesus Christ, and you have it right here in Mel Melchizedek. Oh, it's the same go. thing. Yep. Hi, please. Interesting. So, all right. So we have Psalm 110 verses one through seven. This is also a mention of the Old Testament of Melchizedek. It says, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. The Lord shall send the rod of your strength out of Zion. Rule in the midst of your enemies. Your people shall be volunteers in the day of your power in the beauties of holiness from the womb of the morning. You have the dew of of your youth the lord has sworn and and will not relent you are a priest forever according to the order of melchizedek the lord is at your right hand he shall execute kings in the day of his wrath he shall judge among the nations he shall fill the places with dead bodies he shall execute the heads of many countries he shall drink the brook of wayside therefore he shall lift up the head so just a little mention of him you are a priest forever according to the order of order melchizedek of isn't that interesting you're a priest forever uh what right. the Lord has sworn and that's interesting because through through david you know obviously jesus is going to come through the line of david so 
It's kind of interesting how they how he mentions him. Now, um, now we get to a part in the Bible where they take uh, the magnifying glass and they just point it directly towards Melchizedek. This is interesting. This is in the New Testament. Now, Hebrews, guys, as we know, most people say that Paul wrote Hebrews, but I don't. We don't know a hundred percent. Okay. But also, if you're mentioned in the Old Testament and you're mentioned in the New Testament, now it's confirming you're guys. pretty important. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you gotta be your important. So let's see what Hebrews says about Melchizedek. Okay, so this is gonna be a uh, this is gonna be long too, but this is this is all part of Melchizedek, and this is all you're gonna find. So Hebrews Holy. seven verses one through twenty eight. And Jim, Pastor Jim, if you want to stop me at any time, or Jason, if you want to stop me at any time in between these, uh, just go ahead and 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 and, talk, and go ahead and just talk. You know, for the Melchizedek, King of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all. First, being translated, King of Righteousness, and then also King of Salem, meaning King of Peace. Without father, without mother, without genealogy, having neither beginning, days, nor end of life, but made like the Son of God, remains a priest continually. Uh, we'll stop right there, okay, guys? I'm going to keep going, but... Yeah, that's, that's, a, great, that's that. a great place to uh, emphasize right there. Hey, I got I to gotta highlight it before you even read that. I was, I was <laughs> to highlight it like, like six years that, ago. That's a description of Jesus Christ, if you, if you stop and you think about it. Think about um, that. We're going to reread that part. So it says, um, okay, king of righteousness, and then also king of Salem, meaning king of peace, without father, without mother, without genealogy. So he's either, you know, adopted or something, and he doesn't know who his father and mother are, or he has no genealogy, guys. It says, having neither beginning of days nor end of life. That sounds like that means he's he a deck from the very beginning. Yeah, and it sounds like Melchizedek di didn't die. Like the only people oh, we know yeah. that didn't die is Enoch and Elijah. That's that's biblically who we know didn't die. But it says right here, uh, having neither beginning days nor end of life, but made like the Son of so God. Which also, also kinds of says Josh that he's been here since the very beginning. Yeah. Also, yeah, you and know? it says remains a priest continually. Just like the son of God. Okay. It says that's interesting. Exactly, right. All right. Now let's keep going. It says now consider how great this man was to whom even the patriarch Abraham gave a 10th of his spoils. And indeed those who are the sons of Levi who received the priesthood have a commandment to receive tithes from the people according to the law that is from their brethren. Thou uh, through they have come from the loins of Abraham, but he whose genealogy is not derived from them, received tithes from Abraham and blessed him who had the promises. Now beyond all contradicting, the lesser is blessed by the better. Here mortal men receive tithes, but there he receives them of whom it is witnessed that he lives. Even Levi who receives tithes paid tithes through Abraham. So to speak, for he was still in the loins of his father, then Melchizedek met him. Therefore, if perfection were through the Levitical priesthood, for under the people received the law, what further need was there that another priest would, should rise according to the order of Melchizedek and not be called according to the order of Aaron? For the priesthood being charged for necessity, there's also a change of the law, for he of whom uh, things are spoken belongs to another tribe, for for which no man has officiated to the altar. For it is evident that our Lord arose from Judah, of which the tribe of Moses spoke nothing concerning priesthood, and is yet for evident in the likeness of Melchizedek, there arises another priest who has come, not according to the law of a fleshly commandment, but according to the power of endless life. For he testifies, you are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. For on one hand, there is an annulling of the former commandment because of the weakness of un unprofitableness for the law made nothing perfect. On the other hand, there is a bringing in of a better hope for which we draw near to God. So <clears throat> it's, it's, and there's more too, but just, just to, man, it does say that he was uh, a man, right? But it's just the way that they're 
speaking of this, it's just it was more than a man. It sounds like it's just interesting. It's talking about him not having a genealogy. Uh, he was at like the Le- Levites were in the loin of, of, of Abraham and not even here yet. Um, it's just, it's just interesting. Um, no, no mother, no father. Yes. No yes. beginning, no end. And it's talking about how Jason uh, was talking about the law wasn't even made yet. And he still received ties. This is crazy. Cause he's even talking about that here. Um, it says, um, and in so much, he was not made priest without an oath for they have become priest without an oath but he with an oath by him who said to him the lord what has sworn and will not relent you are a priest for made him a priest well who made him a priest it says he's a priest of the lord most high i know but who made him the priests when you're a, when you're a king, you're the king you don't do that you know that's not what that's not your business you have other you appoint them to do that you have other things to take care of yeah, he's a pretty important guy and, and if he doesn't have no genealogy and he's mentioned like this you gotta think, yeah, maybe he was. Maybe he was. Maybe that's why Abraham was like, "Hey, dude, this guy." Because Abraham was a pretty, pretty strong. You know, by that time, he was already. Well, he was going, fighting battles against. Yeah, yeah, he was Sodom already, and all. Yeah, he was already kings. settled in. He was already settled yeah. in. He was a pretty big nation. You know, he's already starting out with a big nation. So he wasn't just gonna like, oh, here's here's Melchizedek. Here's, you know, I'll bow down to him. Whatever, dude, he's cool. No, he'd be like, hey, what the, who's this guy? He's a king high priest. Who's he claiming he's a king high priest of? Who who made him king? But he's not. He's not doing that. He's giving him respect, right off the yeah. bat. Not even knowing who he is. So it says the Lord has sworn and will not relent. You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. But by so much more, Jesus has become a sure, uh, surely of a better covenant. Also, there were there were many priests because they were prevented by the death from continuing. But he. Uh, because he continues forever, it has a unchangeable priesthood. Therefore, he was able to save the utmost. So now it's going to get, it's not going to talk about Melchizedek anymore. Okay. I just wanted to get through that part, but let's get into um, some, some interesting stuff about Melchizedek. Let's see. Let's see if I have um, that brought up here. Um, Changes. To oh, I had some good stuff. Where is it at? I had an article on it I wanted to read. Um, Sodom and Gomorrah. Melchizedek. Okay, I can't really find it, so I'm going to have to just... Um, did you have any more on, on Melchizedek? Uh, oh, there we go. Wait, Melchizedek. Jesus. Well, I something? just point out, Josh, that that it's almost like if you, if you follow through and you read about Melchizedek and and the scripture in the Old Testament, Christ replaced, I mean, the, the image of Christ or the, um, the personification of Jesus Christ um, it replaces Melchizedek. Uh, they talk about him in the New Testament, but Melchizedek isn't around. Once again, you don't need him because uh, Jesus Christ is here. Yes. Exactly. Yep. And um, man, there was such good stuff in there too. Oh man, I wish I had that. Um, yep. I had like a whole thing on um, like the, it, it kind of shows you that he was a type of, of Christ or. Yeah. He's a type of Christ. There's like Adam's a type of Christ. Like I feel like Samson was supposed to be like a type of Christ, but he failed miserably. You know, like there's, there's, a, there's a lot of types of, Jesus Christ is all over the Old Testament. Oh, there we go. Dude, he's almost over every page. He's a, he's he's all over that thing. It's 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 fun to it's fun to find the spots where he's there. Yes. Like you um, thought you said Melchizedek. You could yeah, throw so right there. There was a few things that okay, so he had no recorded family uh history, which we already kind of looked into, no genealogy. He lived during the time of Abraham. Uh the New Testament says more about him than the Old Testament. We kind of went over that. Um also, let's see. I just had like a, a list of stuff, guys. I wanted to kind of uh, talk to you guys about. I wonder what ancient records have about him. Like, if you went on, like, you know, if you went over there and visited and and, and try to dig deep into who that guy was. Yeah, it's Mel- Melchizedek was a priest of God the Most High. That's interesting that they put it that way. Um, he also blesses Abraham. Uh, you know, when when he which is, which is interesting. And, uh, Melchizedek, he was the King of Salem, which I kind of went over, uh, his name means King of righteous. 
that's that's interesting um that's similar to like jesus or king of peace and order melchizedek is royal and everlasting yeah so I went pretty much the stuff, all, all the stuff I had, these 10 things I wanted to go over, guys, I think we already kind of touched on. Um, Melchizedek was greater than Abraham and Aaron is something that this article says um, because Abraham looked up to Melchizedek and he also, you know, he tithed to him. So I thought that was interesting. And Abraham is looked at as someone that's definitely high in the, in the Old Testament. People uh, would think, you know, especially through the Jewish line, right? Um, that's why they brought up Abraham to Jesus because they, they looked at, G at Abraham so high, him and Moses. Um, yeah. So the rest of the stuff, I think I, we already touched on. So I think that was amazing stuff. I think we went through. Um, I don't think we have to go too much into like the Trinity part because we can get the, get, in, get into that on another episode. We already went through the Trinity so much on two episodes that you guys can listen to. If you are listening, if you want to go back, there's a Trinity episode that we went, we did. And there was another Trinity episode we did. But they were interesting because we had non-Trinitarians on there and we were kind of, I was going over verse by verse by verse. But one thing I want to say is in Revelation, Jesus says, I am the Alpha, the Omega, and the beginning and the end. And in Isaiah, God the Father says, I'm the Alpha, Omega, beginning and the end. So you got to look at that. The Alpha, Omega, the beginning and the end, okay, is what Jesus says in Revelation. And, and, and also in Isaiah, God, Father God says, I am the Alpha Omega beginning and the end. And in Revelation 1.8, God the Father says, I am the Alpha Omega the beginning and the end. So if you have God the Father and Jesus both saying, I am the Alpha Omega beginning and the end, both of them are, are, are God, okay? Also, the, the Holy Spirit, that's something we got into on, on our, our Trinity part two, if you guys want to look into that. Because we got to give, we, we got to give uh, praises to the Holy Spirit as well, you know? And there's a lot of places that, that the Holy Spirit shows up. Now, if you are a Trinitarian, you guys could study the angel of the Lord and see some people that are Unitarians believe that the, that the angel of the Lord is the Holy Spirit. Okay, guys. So there's different ways that people look at it. Um, you it's know, the same thing. Yeah, they, they feel like it's the Holy Spirit and not Jesus. Jesus doesn't show up until uh, Mary has Jesus. So you guys got to understand there's different ways of looking at this. And I don't like to just only do Trinitarian stuff only, but this episode Mostly we're, we're trying to, you know, we're only going into the angel of the Lord, Melchizedek, and we're trying to do our best, you know? So in our time, believe, limit in, God, that we had, believe in God and Jesus. If you don't, if you don't believe in that, you have a lot more problems than just believing in anything else in there. So yes, this is start off with that first and get, get that squared away before you start to just dive in here and try to try to argue the points of this is the Holy spirit. And this is, this is Jesus Christ. And this is God. You yeah. know, the stuff we went into, you don't even know this stuff. We don't know this 100% for sure either. We're just trying to prove to you well, through scripture, whoever's listening, whoever's, whoever has a knack for this, to open up your book and study it. That's it. I don't, whatever, however it gets you, whoever gets you to this Bible, however it gets you there, by all means, through, whether it's negative or positive, whatever gets you pushed towards this Bible is, is nothing but good. So I'm, I, 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 would, I would pray for you. Sorry for the, if, if anything does tragically happened to where you find your faith but if that's the way it's got to go that's the way it's got to go and right yeah. now and yep and that's i how it went for me that's how it went for me i had to go through tragedy to find this and now that i found this you know i was taught a lot of this stuff when i was a young kid but no one ever taught me stuff like this no one ever showed me like to really dig deep into the the under current of the of the bible there's well a, this is the meat i, yeah. I, I want to say to everybody that this this is like you know paul talks about like people you know getting the milk you know and, and a lot of churches today which i love i'm not saying anything okay but a lot of people are receiving the milk right now and not receiving the meat so what happens with all the churches is they want to receive more and more people not saying that they're trying to be greedy with money but they're, they're trying to get more and more people so they kind of they kind of they, they keep in this little line but they get I, soft. Was, I prayed to God one time. I prayed to God. I'm going to tell you guys a story. I prayed to God at my work. And I said, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I want the meat because I want to be able to teach on, you know, these podcasts and stuff. I want the meat to be able to show people. And God answered my question. What he did is he said, I'm going to have you do a Trinity podcast and another Trinity podcast. And that's what I went through when I asked him for the meat, because that's the stuff that's like, whoa, it's, it's, it's when you get into the Trinity, it's going to blow your mind. And then also the meat is the stuff that we're talking about here. This is like more of the meat. And then Genesis six, I think that's like the meat because then it shows you exactly what's going on 
in the Old Testament and why God did all this stuff. But and it, um, and it, and it also helps you understand it. Yeah. Start to get, okay. Oh, wow. Before, when I read that a thousand times before, I didn't get it like that. And then that's what self thinkers, self teachers. That's what we're trying to do here. We want you to be a self teacher where you go around when you get you, you open the book and go, oh, wow. Now I get it. Now I could teach my son this, or maybe I could teach my friend this, or maybe someone's on the fence of becoming a Christian. And you're like, now I could use this to be like, maybe they're interested in stuff like this. And then you, you buzz them with it and they're like, oh, wow, that's pretty cool. I never thought of it that way. The Bible is really cool. Even if you're not even into, even if you don't believe in God, dive in. I guarantee you'll be a believer after that. You'll be a believer in something. <laughs> I guarantee that. You'll, you'll, you will definitely be, be intrigued. And there is no, and, and it doesn't matter. You're going to read it a thousand times. There's going to be new stuff that grabs your yeah. attention to go, man, sure. that's. Really Pastor Jim, what do you think? What do you think is the meat of the Bible? Like, is there anything you could kind of get into on that? That, that you, you, you feel like that churches need to start uh, hitting on? Well, uh, I think the milk is salvation and baptism. Yeah. And I think everything else is the meat. Okay. And in so many churches today, um, uh, salvation and baptism is all that's really taught. Mm -hmm. Hey, there's a couple of things that in conclusion, I know we need to wrap this up um that um it, one thing is uh, you were talking you were talking about how some people think that um uh melchizedek or the angel of the lord or uh is actually the holy spirit but um you know it's a it's a physical presence of God here in this dimension. And the Holy yeah. Spirit is never a physical. Uh, I mean, you can't find any, any place in the Bible. I, I don't believe where, where it states that somebody saw the Holy Spirit. It's just, I, that I doesn't happen. I totally and, agree. And the point. last thing, the last thing that I'd, I'd like to say that that kind of wraps up the whole Trinity is for me is in the first epistle of John uh, chapter five, uh, starting with verse seven, I'll, I'll read it to you real short, it's two verses, uh, verse seven, for there are three that bear record in heaven, the father, the word, and the Holy ghost. And these three are one. That's the Trinity folks. And then in verse eight, it states, and there are three that bear witness in earth, the spirit, and the water and the blood. And these three agree in one. Um, it's the combination of the three that makes up uh, the, the Father, the Word, or the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yeah, that's interesting. That's interesting. Yeah, so guys, look into that. Um, also, like, obviously, when, when Jesus gets baptized, you know, you kind of see it right there. You see Father God speaking from heaven and, and the, the Holy Spirit coming down to him like a dove and Jesus gets baptized, you know, so and uh, it's it's interesting. And also, um, the and Jesus also says that I will lead by the Holy Spirit to protect you. Right. So G the Holy Spirit is, is used and Jesus is used and God is used. It's just different, different ways so it's it, they're different persons though it's not it's not they're not like god the father was jesus like you know you know it's kind of hard to explain it's 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 really i don't want to get into the trinity part because that takes a whole hour and a half to get into before we get into it but what that? pastor jim is saying yeah it's interesting but that that is first john what he's talking about now i want to tell you guys about that verse some because i i've listened to trinity debates that have gone i've listened to probably like 20 hours of Trinity debates. Okay. That verse that he said there, there's, you guys can look into it. There's, there's question on that verse that he said about the, 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 the gut, that, that part, I, I don't want to get into it. Cause I don't know it off the top of my head, but I, 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 I look at, look, watch some Trinity verses. You guys can see how people go neck and neck with this. It gets interesting, <laughs> but anyways, thank you guys for listening. Uh, I love you guys so much. We don't ask you guys for any money. We don't care. What we want you guys to do for us is just share the podcast, okay? I know people need to listen. They need to hear the word of God. There's people that are starving for the word of God that don't even know it. So all we ask you guys to do is subscribe, hit the like button, and hit the bell. 
and share the podcast with as many people as you can share it with. And we would appreciate you guys dearly. Everybody that's li- now, most people that are listening on YouTube, a lot of you guys will comment and I could talk back and forth with you. Um, and Jason, you know, I'll send some questions to him. But if you guys that are on Apple and Spotify, I want to thank you guys as well, because I don't really get to talk to you guys much. All I see is a couple questions that you guys answer, but there's a whole group of people on Apple and Spotify. If you want to talk to me or DM me or ask me to pray for you, just go to Josh Monday uh, underscore podcast on Instagram and I will pray for you guys. And I'd like to get a relationship going on with you guys too. Most of the people that I meet are from, are from YouTube. So I would like to meet you guys as well. And I'll, if you want to meet Jason or if you have any questions for us, or if you want us to pray for you, we are here for you guys. Um, please guys go and check out pastor Jim's book, uh, angels or aliens. Okay. Uh, and also check out his YouTube page. Okay. Thank you guys so much for listening. We love you guys. Let us end this in prayer. Like we always do. Father God, in the name of Jesus, thank you so much for all these incredible verses and uh, this beautiful stuff that you do in the Bible, leaving us breadcrumbs, uh, helping us be diligent in your word. If anything that we spoke today is wrong, you know, we're just trying to do our best, Lord. Please forgive us. We're just trying to, uh, you know, we, we, we don't have a, we don't, I don't know Hebrew and I don't know Greek. Uh, I don't know Aramaic. All I know is English. So I try to do my best to try to pick through people that do know Hebrew and do know Greek. And we're trying to do our best to interpret the Bible, Lord. So please, Father God, if you could help this get out to as many people that need to hear this. We appreciate everything you give us in the Bible. We appreciate us being able to even read. You appreciate the food that you give us, the water that we get to drink. And thank you so much for giving us this podcast. Anybody that needs you right now, including myself, Lord, break all the chains uh, help people to not sin, break all the chains, Lord, that are, that are trying to hold people down, shackle them, uh, you know, and, and, and uh, whatever separating them from you or me from you or Jason from you or Pastor Jim from you, break those chains, Lord, uh, rebuke all the demons in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord. Thank you so much for everything you do for us. We appreciate you and we love you, Lord. Thank you in Jesus name. Amen. amen. All right. Thank you guys for listening. This was a beautiful podcast i loved it talking you know so much hey, before verses. you go hey, where's dave gardner been man i've been missing that guy i want to no, talk he'll to come him. back he he sent me some he sent me some stuff he's gonna come back on dave gardner will be back on it's just talk to him, tell him i, said, I need I'm the right man. i need the right subject for him <laughs> that's all thanks thanks jim for being on it was awesome was thank you pastor jim we love you too man we appreciate Absolutely. you thank, thank you, you taylor we love you taylor thanks for being the technical support for pastor jim And thank you for coming on on short notice too, Pastor Jim.